Hello everyone, Sai here, welcome back. Today we're playing The Working Man. Why? Um, you guys like scary stuff? And, uh, from the description of the game, it seems like there's, um, content warning. Violence, weapons, disturbing injury, death, blood. We've all been through this before, blah, blah. Uh, The Working Man, yes. Uh, has a good number of endings. If you don't like scary stuff, probably leave because but if you do like scary stuff or if you just like to hear me scream because i do not then stick around and if you like it leave a like subscribe if you're new and let's get into it this game contains numerous renderings like i said if you like the full experience and would like to gain a better understanding of setting and plot points go through a few times all right you arrive home at after a long day of monotonous work, office work. I might not be saying that right. That's because I usually don't use paper when it's tired and ready to relax with your family. You walk inside. You enter your home. Honey, I'm home and the kids have lice. Ah, you've had a long day. Go relax in the living room. Okay, so I can either be a great husband or just be a jerk. You go to the living room, toys on the ground, but no children in sight. Yeah, that would... Likely taking their afternoon after-school naps. You ha take a seat on the couch, grab a blanket to ease the cold temperature of the home, and turn on the TV. What do you watch? Okay, so... It's kind of weird. If, if, if a game... If a horror game states that they can't find anyone, they're, they're, they're definitely not taking their after-school naps. Unless their after school naps are forever. Uh, the newest episode of that hot new drama, The News or Reality Show. For me, it would probably be the newest episode of the hot new drama. Because I don't really like news or reality TV shows. Uh, you sit at the edge of your seat as the cast is thrown into danger like every episode before it. Always put up against the vaguely offensive native tribe of the island they were stranded upon. Favorite character dies from a stray arrow. Wow, that must have hurt. A few hours pass, the night grows darker, and you hear nothing of your family. The room chills further. Like I said, they're taking their afternoon nap. Make dinner, bring your dog in for the night, check upstairs. I feel like if I do either of these two, I'm going to get slashed in the throat. When I make dinner, I feel like I'm gonna get slashed in the throat. Actually, I don't know which one is safe. Um, my dog's probably going to eat me. And I definitely should not check upstairs, so make dinner. The house is pitch black, lightly illuminated by the light of the TV. You stumble over the, to the kitchen and turn on the lights. The room feels different than before. Yeah, that's not good. Make food. You have nothing but macaroni and cheese. I mean, macaroni and cheese is amazing. What do you have against mac and cheese? Seriously. If I could have Mr. Max for the rest of my life, I would. You guys probably don't know who that is because there's probably only one in the US. Or in the world. You feast. Check on the dog. Go upstairs. Okay. It... Fine, I'll get ripped up by the dog. You walk to the back door, turn up. Turn on the yard light and see the dog lying on its stomach in the middle of the grass facing away from you. Well, uh, yes, yeah, so I don't think it's asleep. I mean, my dog usually doesn't lie on its stomach while it's sleeping. Kind of just curls up into a ball. So, you slowly approach the dog and shake him slightly to wake him up. He doesn't wake up, does he? But why are you at such a long ellipsis? The dog rises. Oh, okay, he's fine. And rises. Okay, he's not fine. Your crunches and squeals from the dogs. As your furry friend begins to split in two, perfectly bisected, his body opening from below like a bound novel, rising up upon his extended mangle erratic ribcage, tip tapping along frantically like some horrific ungodly insect on its new newfound legs as they grow and grow to twice your size. 
That's a vivid imagery. My eyes are firmly in position and won't move. Rover turns and bends down to face you as mandibles extrude from the split face of your beautiful boy. <laughs> Not Rover. Anyone but Rover. Even my son, I really did not care about him. You can see how his minuscule tail wagging, his eyes looking at as longing as ever. The half maw, which still contains a tongue, licks your face and begins to bark excitedly. Oh, he's still fine. He likes me. He leans backward and rests, revealing to you the open cage of mangled bone and flesh. Organs pushed aside, his skin stretched over top as a thin veil to the grand opening underneath. Looks as if he could hold you whole. Seems a warm invitation. If I run, he's gonna catch me and kill me. If I enter, he's gonna catch me. Oh, actually, he already caught me. He's gonna kill me. Eh. I mean, he's probably just gonna rip me apart. This one, I might actually live, just get teleported to a different world. You enter the opening of the dog. It closes around you and feel yourself melt into the earth. You feel yourself rematerialize in a dark room, feeling- See? See? I- I have seen too many horror movies for this. Actually, I don't really watch horror movies. I just- I'm kind of weak. Uh, feeling yourself incompatible encompassed by a fleshy substance as your eyes begin to adjust to the light you see on du I can't, I don't know. Veiny walls, floor and ceiling of flesh around you. Uh, it reminds you of your basement, only corrupted by some strange entity. Yet the welcome feels almost warm. You hear a low grumbly voice as the flesh around you vibrates in unison to produce the words it next speaks. From all directions, the being speaks. Join, we rule. A hand extends out of the nearest wall, awaiting a handshake. Else we perish. Another hand comes forth from the wall, holding a ball formed of a thick, translucent pink membrane with veins throughout. What lies inside is the brightest substance you've ever seen. It illuminates the room far brighter than the sun ever could. You sense power. Join or perish. I feel like it's pretty straightforward. If we perish, we perish. If we join, we don't perish. So, you know, I'm gonna... I, I don't want to die. You shake the hand of the being, and you're unable to let go. As tendrils wrap firmly around your arm and your whole body, you are encompassed by the being whole, yet still able to move as before. You become one with the being, wrapped in a tight layer around you. You see the being morph and form a throne of flesh before you you humbly accept. From the ground emerges Rover, your boy, Maw, in his beautifully mangled form as before, your most powerful ally. You pet him lovingly. Ugh. Ugh, that's in my brain now. Ugh. Ugh. I don't like that. You, <laughs> you look out on an alien street of suburban neighborhood. Where, wherever your hand points, another home that is encompassed by the flesh. Your power grows. You became one with the flesh and rejected humanity and became monkey. King of flesh, ending complete. The end. Attempt another path. You walk inside. Let's say, honey, I'm home. Your voice echoes throughout the house without a reply. A normal occurrence made strange by the fact that yet the family car still lies motionless in the driveway. Perhaps she didn't hear you. Honey, I'm... <gasps> check upstairs. You decided to go up to check your wife. To check on your wife. Ooh, that was going to be weird. You figure it's unlike her to uh, not be up and at him so late in the day. You find your way up the stairs and knock on the door to your bedroom. You open a jar and see your wife putting clothes away. Is everything okay, dear? Oh, honey, you're home. She greets you warmly. Did you not hear me come in? I'm, I, I pretty much screamed it like three times. Oh, I must have not been paying attention. It's real focus on the housework, I guess. She chuckles to herself. <laughs> well, I'm glad everything's okay. I'll be downstairs relaxing. If you want to come watch something, you turn to leave. All right, honey, I, you seem like you've had a long day. I'll be down in a bit to cheer you up. She smiles. What's What's that word? I've never heard of it. 
please help me. As you turn away to leave, you see her turn back to the pile of clothes and see the back of her hand. A large purple growth protruding through the locks of her hair makes itself known. She's infected. We gotta get rid of her. We rush back into the room. What the what the what the H-E Uncle Dripple hockey sticks is that on your head? You yell at your wife. What are you talking about? There isn't anything on my head. Are you okay, darling? She asks quite genuinely. Before you have a chance to get another word in, your two children rush in to the, the room and hug you around your waist, saying in unison, Daddy's home! As you, as you hug them back, you feel your hands gla- glaze across the back of their heads and feel the most horrific, cavernous, veiny, pulsing texture, discovering that them two are unaware of the same affliction they hold. You can see your daughter, daughter's arm has extended to the ground, mangled and twisted as it drags along behind her with seemingly a mind of its own. Your son's tongue has grown to an incredibly, incredible length, moving erratically as it hangs from his mouth. It's getting weird, and your wife's eyes have become growing wider and further back into her head, as if some creature inside were sucking them in. All of this, and they still seem to be acting as themselves, her- horrific as they are becoming. Are you sure you didn't take anything before coming home? Because um, I could, I could, I could talk to the um, whoever runs the uh, poison control or drug administrators and see what you took. But uh, other than that, they're still family. Listen, as a f- as someone who is in a family of literally crazy people, this this is not this is not normal. The, I mean, it is not is not mm, i wouldn't care they're still my family and i i still i still love them for it they're still family you hug your children tighter than ever your wife kisses you you feel a tingle run from your lips to the back of your head spread down through your body for now you re- remain unaware though your fate is sealed yeah that was a bad idea maybe before you leave before you leave this world you know what you must do Let's go have some family time in the living room, everyone. You all go on ahead. I'll be there soon. They all leave. The children giddy as ever. As your love escorts them down to the stairs, go to the kitchen. You sneak your way down the stairs into the kitchen. After they've all gone, you know what has to be done for the sake of everyone. Turn on the gas. I don't like this. No. Seriously, man. You just said they're family. You're not gonna kill them. You find your way to the stove. Oh, um, pu- open the gas valves of the four burners. Not lighting a single one. You hear the hiss of vapors coming forth from the stove top. You find your way to the furthest drawer. You open it. I don't want to. It's not giving me any other answers or options. I don't care if everyone else dies. They're my family. Hmm. You grab the matches and quickly stuff them away in your pocket. Go to the, oh. So we're fine? Go to the living room. You take a seat down with your family and watch a show you've never see- even heard of. Your dog comes and rubs against you, also deformed as the back, also at the back of his head. With protrusion coming from Rover's stomach, you feel a bump against you as he jumps up and lays in your lap. <laughs> Disgusting. You sit, holding all of them tight as you can. You smell the gas while smiling as tears stream from your eyes. You pull the matches. This is you begin to lose yourself and you're unaware as the match lights. Exorcism by fire ensues. Your fa- you stomped out the infection and yourself. Family's family. That ain't complete. I didn't like that one. That was a sad ending. Uh, at least we died with it. Because we deserve to die with it. Uh, let's not talk to them. You've had a long day. Go relax in the living room. Uh, what if we um, bring your dog in for the night? To check on them. Okay, I want to I wanna see what would happen... If I don't, if I run from the dog, uh, because the, the thing didn't, like, give me an option just go back one, so it's gonna take a bit, but I, I 
really want to know because this could go in a couple of different directions. I could like survive for a while. Yeah, like see, run or enter. If I run, he sprint back inside the whence he came, slam the door, and with adrenaline pumping through your veins, you hear the glass door break, rapid taps of bone on wood trailing closely behind. You appear to be running endlessly through halls. Living room, kitchen, living room, kitchen, living room. All without exit in sight. Windows blocked by some kind of flesh like a membrane. You knew something had to be done. The kitchen, close the knife. The garage, far, far a sledgehammer. Oh, that's how far they are. The kitchen, close. A knife. The garage, far. Sledgehammer, upstairs, furthest. A gun. I won't be able to make it upstairs, and I don't think I should. The garage, slightly far, but I can't kill with a knife. I think a sledgehammer is the only way. Make a sharp left turn out of the living room to rush towards the garage, dodging a cat, and attack from a sharpened bone of the creature. What is this? That creature from... The Quiet Place? Is that what the... What? I think it's the right monster. I don't know. Is that the one with the arm things that, like, bone will kill you? I don't think so. I forget what I'm thinking about. Uh, but as you stop to open the garage door, another swift, swift swipe pre precisely amputates your foot. You hobble to the tool rack and grab your sledgehammer. As the creature slowly contorts itself through the small entrance to the garage, breaking the drywall surrounding it as it tries to push through, using an opportunity to open. Slam the head or slam the legs. What? Okay. Mm, these are hard decisions. For you guys, it might seem pretty easy to uh, e to slam the head, but for me, it, it the leg. We don't know if the head still has the brain, because this is just an amalgamation. The head could just be like a separate part of its body that doesn't use. It could still probably attack us with the legs, and we don't know if like it has a mouth. I don't remember. You swing the hammer high above your head, faltering slightly as you try and stand on your stub. You still manage a decent hit down upon the right half of the creature's head, slam it down to the ground and smash it the head against the con concrete with a splash. It lies stunned on the ground. You stop for a moment, seeing nothing but robur's fur before you. Run past or finish it. It's gonna. It's gonna. Catch me if I run past. I'm gonna have to. Hmm. It is my boy. I don't. Why is that an option? We just murdered it. It's not your boy anymore. You raise the hammer once more, as high as you possibly can, and strike the beast down. Its heart explodes under the force of the hammer. They lie motionless and mangled, blood creeping out of its body. Slowly it retracts its appendages, close up closes up and it reforms itself into one again. Its original form lies motionless in an ocean of blood. Mm, that makes it even worse. These black and white locks are as soft as ever. Check on your family. Three, two, one. Okay, I was just seeing something else appeared because they d did that with uh, the dog. Uh, you rush upstairs to check on your family members, rush into the room to see that your wife has become nothing but an amalgamation of flesh connected to and being pulled to the floor of the home. You go to your children and see nothing but the same again. You remember the membrane you saw over the windows and the endless always. It's the house, the house which has been taking everything away from you. Uh, this is becoming a pretty cool eulogy. Uh, so what I'm getting from this is that this house is what's controlling it all like there's something th there's either something in the house or it is the house because um as we saw in all these other things nothing else happens to any of the other homes except you know when our home becomes one with them uh where we're just a meat flesh thing so it must we must be the the house must be something that is not normal or there's something in the house like in the walls or something like that i don't know you rush to check in your family uh 
That was which has taken everything away from you. You rush downstairs and see the body being absorbed into the floor in much the same way. The beast will not be on until you take action. Alright, so the beast is going to be on now. You grab your hammer and slam down one of the floorboards as hard as you can. A bur bu burst of sawdust and wood comes flying up, revealing the rancid flesh underneath, beginning to die out from the power of your blow. Little by little, you would bring this beast to its knees. After countless sleepless days and nights, crashing down every inch of this wicked house, tearing the beast limb from limb, giving it slow death it has more than come to deserve. You're fin fin you finally have destroyed all but the basement. What you have come to see is the festering core of the beast. How are you still, like, why? how do you still have energy? Your foot's ripped off, which could have been, like, a major artery, and also... You've been doing it for days and nights with a sledgehammer. What? This guy's either the greatest person in the world or this story is just fiction. I should probably stop wailing about everything. Just so happens you work a weapons depot finance friends of the boss even. Wow, yeah. What a lucky coincidence. You get scolded for not showing up to work for a couple weeks as expected, but you get a word in with your boss saying you need some explosives. They're not going to question why you have a nub for a foot now, and that's maybe why you aren't showing up for a couple weeks? No? Okay. Saying you need some explosives to blow up an old car for tax reasons. The whack job takes it hook, line, and sinker. I've never heard of that before. Three pounds of C4. You say it's a real big fan. Six pounds of C4. Down the basement hatchet went, and in a moment or two, a beautiful red ge geyser of dead beasts comes bursting out. You drop down a couple cans of open lighter fluid and some matches down for good measure. You stomp down a li small living piece trying to skitter away. They're not gonna. How, how would they buy its real big van? You asked for six pounds of C4. My guy. The job's been done, but you see another case pop up somewhere across your town. You got the tools for the job. You became the flesh exterminator. Pest control ending complete. The end. Hmm. Okay, so it's not in the house. Or it might be in the house, it's just not the house because it's at somewhere across your town. Hmm. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to end the video here. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe for new, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you for watching this one, Sai, and I am...